Aloha and welcome back to another talk story with John Waihe'e. And today is a special program for a lot of reasons. And the most important of which is we're going to be talking about one of Hawaii's great public servants. And equally important, one of the nicest human beings I, I have ever had the privilege of knowing and probably a great, one of the best lawyers I've ever got to know. So my guest this afternoon is Jay Fidel and our subject is CJ Ronald Moon. Now, <clears throat> Ron was just honored in a special session of the Hawaii Supreme Court. The court actually reconvened itself at a special session and I was there and honored to talk a little bit about the CJ. And I can tell you that um, there was a good cross section of people that, uh, that you know, reminisced about him and the rest. And I know that you knew who he, who he was, Jay. So why don't we just get started? You know, I had the privilege of, um, well, I'll tell you the first though, we'll, I'll, I'll open up this since this will be a conversation between the two of them. Um, <clears throat> my introduction to Ron Moon, and, and there's a follow-up story to this story, okay? My introduction to Ron Moon was one of when I, early on, I was a, a plaintiff's lawyer. I think it was a, a workers' compensation case. Well, Ron was doing a lot of workmen compensation cases way back uh, in the, you know, way back. And so when I, I as I was a young lawyer, so this has got to be about 1976, right after I passed the bar. And I'm working for, and I'm a plaintiff's lawyer, and I'm working hard on this case just to prove that I can, uh, I can do it, you know, <laughs> to my the partners in my law firm, which is very plaintiff oriented, very labor oriented, Shim Siegel, Tam and Naito. In Naito. And anyway, out of the blue, I get this settlement off. And I look at it and wow, it's 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 actually a little bit above fair. And I think that the first thought that occurs to me is I must have calculated wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe this with a defense attorney would be selling. And then the, so when I but when I checked it out with the senior partners and the litigators. No, that's a good offer, you know. And the guy's name was Ron Moon. And from then, he always impressed me as being a, a person, a, a, an attorney. There he is, you know, for the people to see. It's former Chief Justice Ronald Moon. And impressed me as a person who was fair. Now, the follow-up story is also speaking today is um, a, 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 the former chair of the Hawaii Board of Bar Exam, uh, Robert Chong. I don't know if you remember you know, Robert, but, and so he come, we come, uh, so his story about that, right after that, not long after that, he had a case again. And, uh, you know, I put my client on, on, uh, on the stand and did all of that. And I won the case, you know? And he said, say, you beat my case and you know, and so forth. So he had to go back. The reason why this is connected is that he was the clerk to then attorney Ron Moon. And Moon gave him a lecture about why in the world would you lose to him? <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that before I <laughs> see, you know, and so that, that's when I got interested in his career, when he became judge. And, you know, I started paying attention to him because he had this reputation for being, um, yeah, he was definitely, you know, he, he was definitely defending his client. He was no doubt a defense lawyer, but he was very skillful in, in knowing what the line was, you know, what, what was fair for everybody. And, 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 you know, plaintiff lawyers have a hard time admitting that defense guys know fair at all, you know, <laughs> because, but, uh, you know, he seemed to have reached it. Yeah. So anyway, he was a friend of yours as well as mine. So I, maybe you can kick it off with some. Uh, oh, I, I, I thought he was a very powerful lawyer. 
and a um, great people skills. And that's, you know, that's why I think he could find fairness um, that would, you know, that would suit everybody. Uh, he, he liked everybody, I thought. I thought Ron Moon liked everybody. And, and his sense of humor played and all that, because he was one of the funniest men, the funniest yeah. lawyers and judges. <laughs> I'm sure you know what I mean. He was, there was always an abiding sense of humor right below the surface, and it would pop out any time. Well, that was the conversation this whole afternoon yeah. about his joke book and where he got it and how he did it and, and how he kept it running. And, and you know, he, he did have this weird sense of humor. And I, I used to kid him, you know, like he uh, I actually told us today, people would ask me, why, why would I, you know, why, why would you appoint him? Why? Just like that. Why would you appoint him? <laughs> and one of the people who asked me that was strange, uh, it, it was Ron himself. He said, why would you appoint me? I'm a Republican, you know? <laughs> and I told him, I said, Ron, because uh, you may, that'll make me look good. <laughs> and he had a terrific laugh, you know? And, and yeah. he was really an interesting guy. And he had an interesting career, you know? Before he was judge, he, well, he thought of what the Hawaiians call kolohe or rest or a rascal. And he used to be a member of this uh, junior chamber of commerce. And, uh, and, 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 and in those days, the junior chamber of commerce was not the civilized organization that it's become having, uh, you know, allowed uh, female members. Back then they were, they were notorious, you know, and then here later on, he's doing this great job and everything. So I, I used to kid him, I said, you know, See, that's how I know you had the potential for growth. Because you know? <laughs> look at where you are, what you are today, and look at all those antics back then. And, and he was a great guy just to talk. Just to talk. Yeah, well, that, you know, his great strength, you were mentioning it before the show, was uh, as settlement judge. Um, because as I was saying, you know, he liked everybody. He liked even the people that were not so nice, he liked them too. He liked all of humanity. And, and so you get in a settlement conference with him and there were no bad guys or good guys. It was only guys that he related to. Yeah, it was only justice or fairness or whatever. Yeah. That... And he would bring everybody into it. Um, and, and I recall that, um, you know, you, you had this sense of, uh, he's, going, he's going to force me to a position of uh, fairness, and um, and he wants me to come into his view of the world, and I'm willing to come in because, as you said, he he was very um, akamai about where the line was. So he had two books he talked about. Do you do you recall ever had contact with this? He had two. Well, I books. know about the joke book. I'm now finding out there's uh, a second. Make that three or the books, black book. Or the black book. He, he had the, the purple book, book. The purple, purple book. book. Perfect. Is if you didn't come in with enough authority to settle it within his view of the case, um, and you would, and he said, "You don't want to be in my purple book because you know you're not <laughs> going to like the result." And then there was, and then he said, "He said if you don't come in with any authority at all to settle, you're going to be in my black book, and you won't like that at all." Yeah, I don't and know if the black people. book actually actually existed, but. You know, he, well, I he, doubt he, it existed, John. It was just a way that he he twisted your arm, you know. <laughs> you know, it, it, but he what I tell you what he didn't like that as a trial judge though was he didn't like attorneys who showed up late. He he's very you know meticulous person, yeah. and and that was talked about today, and you know, and also a lot about. Well, one thing about Ron was he had this great sense of institution. And in fact, that's, that was the, see, I, when I was appointing judges, I, I felt that, um, that it was the judicial selections job to really go and check out credentials and do all of that. And I, they should never send the appointing authority anybody who wasn't qualified to start with. So, you know, obviously I'd review the materials, but you know, that really wasn't my interest. My interest was what kind of person this judge was. You know? and, and, and these stories that we're telling are insights to, to who he was and, and why 
ultimately I, I appointed him to the Supreme Court and, and Chief Justice. But one of the areas that really impressed me was his, his sense of institution, the importance of the judiciary and, and how it was, you know, not a judge's job to be influenced by what may be swir swirling around him as much as what was the justice in the case. You know, what was the justice in the case? And he, as a result, his court came up with some pretty, um, well, first of all, they came up with some pretty important decisions which he, I don't think he gets as much credit for. I mean, Chief Justice Richardson, who I also admired a lot, gets a lot of credit for some of his decisions, but people forget that, for example, the whole idea of allowing people to marry anybody they love started in, the, it was, it was a decision of the Moon Court. Yeah, but Bayer versus Moon. Yeah. And, uh, Steve Levinson wrote that particular yeah, case. Exactly. right. I cannot tell you, this is a story. This is, this is a story, I'll tell you one more story. And, and, and it's a sort of a joyful day in that sense, but uh, remembering these things, to, you know, for myself as a, as a, uh, as a lawyer, I, I had this appreciation that the ju judiciary ought to be somewhat sacrosanct, you know, different from the administration and so forth. And you get that 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 gets you know pounded into you all the way through law school and all the way through the profession and the rest. And so whether we like it or not, we start to do it. In fact, like my wearing a tie to the first time in years is because I had to go to the court. In fact, Chief Justice Wilson told me you could wear a lower shirt. He never showed up. I said, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because you just don't do it. Anyway. So, the, the, but there was one time, one time when I sort of broke my rule and actually called Ron Moon up and said, look, what the, you know, I got to come over and talk. I really want to talk to you. I, I need to find out what, what you guys think, right? And the way that moment leads up, what leads up to that moment is I get a call from my then attorney general, Warren Price. And he says to me, Warren says to me, he says, Governor, you are really going to want to read this decision. And I tell, I, I, and I'm telling him, I tell him, Warren, I don't read decisions. That's why I have for the <laughs> attorney general. He said, no, no, you're gonna, you wanna see this decision. <laughs> and I said, okay, who wrote it, you know? And he says, Levington, and I've just met another lawyer today. We were both joking, cause this is the same thing I said to Warren. Has Levinson ever written anything less than a hundred pages? You, you want me to read? <laughs> That's funny. It's yeah. funny, but it's true. <laughs> I go, so anyway, I read the thing, and I'm going, "Whoa, wow!" You know, this is really way out there. And we got to remember the idea of a judicial ruling saying that there is a constitutional right to marry anyone of your choice, irregardless of gender, back in the early, well, I guess it was in the early 1990s, yeah. was revolutionary. It was. And, you know, so I, I, I immediately, uh, well, that's when I call Ron and I go over there, you know, and I'm walking in there, steaming so much for this separation of powers thing. This, this is heartburn, man, you know. <laughs> and I, I'm in there and I'm talking to Ron Moon and he's just sitting there cafe. What are you guys doing? You could have reached the same result with a little bit, you know, should less use more judicious use of language. You know, what are you doing? And, and, blah, 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 blah. and he's just sitting there and he's looking at me and he says, Hey, who appointed us? Who appointed Levinson? You know, appointed us. And uh, that's you know. You get what you get, you know. Yeah. And I now at, you have to live with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I looked at him and I said to him, I said, you know, Ron, I'm actually really proud of you. I'm proud of your court. I'm proud of living. But I want you to know this separation of power stuff is something else because I got to go back and it's going to be hell to pay. That's the legislature. <laughs> and it's about, you know? 
<laughs> and, and he just said, well, you know, and, but he did that with a number of decisions, critical decisions. And so I, I was, I, you know, I, I really felt good about, about appointing, uh, submitting his name for uh, chief justice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, nobody gives him, well, they give him more credit. Nobody gave, gave him credit as much as he should get some of these decisions. But we do fortunately recognize the role he played as a really good administrator. Yes. Of the, uh, of the uh, judiciary. Yeah, that's the thing. That, People don't realize that the chief justice is the administrator of the judiciary. It's, it's a whole other job aside from all the you know, decision making. <clears throat> and he was he, very good at that. Yeah, and he you know, created these special courts that he, he and he persuaded the he persuaded now you got to remember that some of these decisions like uh, the Levinson decision affected the political side of the uh, of the government which meant that the legislature for for a while was not too happy with our as they are from time to time not too happy with and so, you know, at the same time, he's trying to build a better judiciary and he's going in for funding to build court buildings and raises for judges, the rest of these things. And he had to go and uh, win back the confidence of the uh, another branch of government. Yeah. And he did a good job of it, you know, and he created, he, he what, one thing he really impressed me with was his insistence that uh, uh, that justice be swift. See, that was why he was a good some settlement judge, because he understood that even if one side or the other won at some point in the future, the cost of the time was also uh, a factor. That you know, you you, you winning in in that situation was. Um, ultimately not really winning. And, and and he didn't like people who used delay as a tactic. And so he and so his whole judicial system uh, and his, you know his objective was to make was to make justice as swift as possible. Yeah and 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 to make the judiciary as efficient as possible. And he would tell you he would tell everybody in the room and and that included the clients who were uh, demanding or funding a given settlement. Um, they were all there together, all trying to be efficient under his leadership, I would say. Um, and, and as a result, he settled so many cases. You knew that if he was going to be a settlement judge in a given case, the likelihood was very, very high it would settle. And that was good for everybody. They may or may not admit it, but it was good for everybody. It, it was good for the whole system. Yeah. You know, and and quite frankly, uh, I don't think we've had a settlement judge that did that as well as he did, you know, move cases along and, and, and fairly, you know. Well, and he, he I guess, um, well, you know, I'm, here I am, I'm supposed to host this program and I'm still, Talking about him like I'm back at the special session. Is this what is this the kind of thing that people were talking about at the special session? Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it's it's worth paying attention to. And I, I you know, I know uh, 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 one of the speakers was uh, Michael Broderick, hmm. who actually was his. I guess I don't know what you call the assistant next to the chief justice that runs the court. But he was that before he was the judge, and he worked with. Him. And you know the stories about how Moon would treat and deal with employees. You know, with a lot of equity, and, and also the, the CJ's um, commitment to uh, diversity. Yeah. Well, you know, it's very interesting that when I when I uh, was uh, thinking about this earlier today. Um, I decided to look at um, at his bar number, which was six seventy four. Uh, yeah. Are you junior or senior to him? What's your bar number, John? No, my bar number is eighteen. 
point, 1864. Oh, you're a young pup. Uh, yeah, compared to him, <laughs> but not compared to the 11,500 numbers that they passed oh, yeah. today. So wow. I went back to the uh, bar, you know, HSBA uh, dot, what is it, ORG website. And um, lo and behold, um, there's the Think Tech Living Legend Lawyers series on there. Uh, I, and I was so curious. I, I went through all of them to see if he was there. And he was there. He was in episode number seven. Okay. <laughs> And yeah, and he was there with his partners. Uh, Ron Lipkeman was, you know, this was the law firm from which he sprung. Uh, right. Lipkeman and Jimmy Ventura. And um, Jimmy Ventura. And, and Sid Ayabi. And yeah. it was just an amazing discussion. And, and you can see, he was a judge at the time. This is like 2015. Um, and you could, or maybe he was retired by then. No. no, no, he was. Yeah, he had to be before 2010, I think. Yeah. Okay. He was. He was a retired judge by then, but uh, you could really get to meet the man because of the comments he made about the firm. Because you know, every firm is complex, dynamic. Every firm oh, yeah. has its own internal, external personalities, and and that firm was a really powerful firm. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you knew at the time you appointed him. Uh, how powerful he had been as a principal of that firm. Uh, it was, they yeah, were he could very have made well a full career just on just practicing law. Yeah, but he he really he did choose to go become a judge. I mean, he wanted to do that. So yeah. I went I, and I went to, and I went and saw this thing, and it is it is on the bar association website, and all you have to do is go to hsba.org and look for Living Legend Lawyers. Um, and it was it was based on the three digit lawyers. You had to have a bar number of less than a thousand. If you, <laughs> what's your number? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, seven twenty. So you so, you're one of the legends. I was uh, I was a guest on those shows. As a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe in another ten years I might make it. <laughs> it you know, it, it's interesting because that, that was mentioned. That was one of the things that people discussed today, the fact that the bar grew so much yeah. over these, these years and, and during his tenure. And, uh, and what, 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 one of the things that really impressed me was how much Ron really loved the institution of the judiciary. And, uh, and uh, Chief Justice uh, Reckonwald talked about how much uh, after Ron had retired and he got appointed, how much time Ron would spend at his request, you know. Uh, helping out, yeah. Helping out and mentoring him, and, you know, doing a lot of things that made life easier for his successor. Right, he was dedicated. He was dedicated to the practice of law. He was dedicated to being a trial judge and a settlement judge and Certainly, he carried that forward to the CJ. You made a good appointment on that one. And, and what's yeah. more, and it goes back to Bear versus Lewin and some of the other you know, decisions that issued out of his court, is he was an inflection point. You know, sure, um, you know, uh, William Richardson was a huge figure in the Hawaii judiciary, huge figure, uh, Native Hawaiian Chinese, amazing man. And, and he sort of put us on the map um, right. judicially. But but Ron Moon Ron Moon was an inflection point. It was moving from one generation to another. He he was my generation, I guess, and yours. And he was he was part of the new the new lawyer group, uh, the group that would take us far beyond statehood. The group that would take us into you know being fully recognized as a state that followed judicial principles, the rule of law, and all that. Uh, he moved us into another place, and I, I would call. I see if you agree. I would call him a, a, an inflection point in the history of the Hawaii judiciary. Would you? Oh, would you agree with that? Definitely, and definitely, and you know, he 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 reflected us where we were as a society and what we wanted to become uh, very well. You know, and as I said, he was a just 
he was a justice who was in love with the with the institution of justice, and that was his uh, his con. He was also this Korean guy who liked to go eat Korean food, you know. So when he, I remember, he used to call me up. We'd go to lunch, and I said, "Ron, is there any place that you can take me to lunch?" I shouldn't say this, but I will anyway. <laughs> any place that you can take me where I won't see a cockroach running across the floor. You know? <laughs> He was the neighborhood guy, you know, he was the guy that would, he knew, you know, he, uh, he knew the spot where the food, where the food was important. Yeah. And, 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 you know, he, he loved doing it. Well, I think the, uh, thing, the, the memorable thing for me is that um, he loved people. He, he, he loved all people. He loved every lawyer and um, every, every, every party. He saw, you know, great judges are made of that kind of material. Um, earlier today, we had the grandson of uh, Sam King, um, wow. a oh, federal judge, yeah. you know, here on Think Tick. And, and it reminded me, of course, of Sam King. I, I thought the world of Sam King. And it was well, the I same mean, kind of thing, John. He loved everyone. Did you try cases before Sam King? I did. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, it, it was amazing. I. I it was one of these experiences. Fortunately, I had fortunately I had co-counsel, which means I could actually listen to some of the stuff and not just be there, you know, sweating my portion of it out. But uh, I did the Kaholavi trials before, and and all of that, and that was new law, breaking new ground, all this kind of stuff. And he um, and our client, my clients lost obviously um, because. You know, they basically, after we set up the premises uh, of their defense, they basically went up there and said, I don't, you know, it's important to me that I get punished. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say it like that, but, you know, they wanted to make a point that so he did. But he did it with, with humor and with, um, he never felt bad about it. And, and I'm talking about people who felt very passionate about what they were doing. And what was interesting is that other people used our memo. And if we had stuck to the plan, uh, we probably would have had the same result that those others had, which was the news media. And they all got, uh, you know, the charges dismissed by Sam, uh, by Judge King. Yeah. So, it, but, you know, I used to like to go to his court and just listen to when I was in law school go to Sam King's courtroom just to hear, just to be there as he conducted the trial. So yeah, yeah. we had some great lawyers in Hawaii. Yeah, and he was a, a fabulous judge. Uh, and, and, as I say, part of it was a sense of humor, uh, just like Ron Ron. And uh, part of it was the sense of um, this kind of uh, avuncular uh, care and concern for everybody who was in front of him. I, I remember uh, one case, uh, thinking about it, where um, uh, it was March 20th, and one of the lawyers in the case said to Sam King, he said, um, Judge, I need more time to answer that pleading. I need another 20 days. And the judge says, uh, okay, you can have until March 40th. <laughs> <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> hey, anyway, Jay, you know, but there's, so a, there's a parallel that runs between those two individuals as judges. This avuncular thing where you knew at the end of the day they they were not going to hurt you. They were going to respect you as a member of the bar uh, who is trying hard, um, representing his client. And and this this raised the level of practice for everybody. Well, because if you knew that about the judge, you would practice for him. And and it's also nice to know the judge probably knows, you know, you, and this is, and I, I don't want to I don't want this to be misunderstood, but you know, there are judges who you go before and you're not really sure they know anything more than you, they know as much as you may have, uh, you know, because of your preparation. In other words, but the thing about Ron Moon and Sam King for that matter, but particularly Ron, since he's a double, was that you knew he was a great trial lawyer and you knew, and he knew exactly where the buttons were. And he knew that, uh, you know, this is this one little point in there, not all of the stuff that you were putting around it 
but this was the nugget. And not not every judge uh, knows that. No, that and once and once you here, as one of the counsel there, <clears throat> you as one of the litigators there, once you recognize that and you realize, you know that 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 you are in the company of somebody who is a fabulous litigator himself, and that he had, as you say, the nose for it. He knew where it was. Then you conduct yourself differently. You're not going to try to pull the wool. You're not going to try to exaggerate because you know he knows what's going on here. And that <laughs> was been there. why he was so good. <laughs> well, I tell you, he was he was he was probably one uh, as a judge. He he was one of the best uh, judges in terms of being a trial as a litigator, yeah. and, and 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 that was his strength. Well, anyway, I, I see that uh, we have run out of time. And Jay, I want to thank you uh, for participating with me this afternoon on this sort of debriefing of a, of a person that both of us have a great deal of respect for. And uh, we've been very fortunate to have known him in our uh, career. So thank you again. And thank you, John. Well. And we will see everybody in, uh, or hear everybody in two weeks. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.